Welcome to Elk Mekvadig, uh, a meeting of all that's unusual, but also all that's ordinary of yesteryear. My friend Ivan guiding around. Uh, that's Ivan's little um, Datsun 1000 that I drove um, a few years ago when I was in the Netherlands, next to a Fiat 850 and a DAF 55, Honda S800, and a little Fiat 128 on the end. But uh, let's go and look at this lineup because this is not something you see very often. So Copens were K cars. Um, we had them in the UK, 660cc turbo initially, but then they changed, nice Celica there, uh, to uh, 1.3 litre Nissan Cube, third gen, a bit more blobby, another Renault Wind, but oh my gosh, look at these Copens. I'm going to have to um, get a photo uh, just for Miss Hubnut while we're here. She'll go giddy over this many Copens. Beautiful. Uh, lovely BMC 1100. Is that a Morris? Good to see the British classics here. The Dutch do like the British classics. Lovely. Go to Carina. Uh, a Kia. We're back to the future inspired, apparently. A Kia Cerato, but celebrated here. So to Corona, I think, or is that an earlier Carina? Might be an earlier Carina. Peugeot 106 Rally. Very, very nice. Another smart roadster. And the car that perhaps inspired it, the Fiat X19. That's a lovely colour. The Daihatsu Charade. Oh, loving that. A TX. Uh, an earlier Charade. And I love these. Look at the little porthole windows in the back. How cute is that? Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, Chrysler Sebring, I think. There's a few of those in the UK. Yeah. Oh, wow. And uh, a Dodge, but I think a Mitsubishi, Dodge Daytona uh, Shelby. So, uh, that initial roll itself gives you some idea about um, what sort of a day we are in for. It's going to be just a random mix of all sorts of weirdness. Like this, whatever this is. I have no idea what this is. I still don't know what that is. A centennial? What's that? I don't know. Honda Accord Coupe, very, very pretty cars. I'm going to have to find out what a Centennial is now. I'm utterly baffled. It's got a lot of LEDs in its rear lights. But uh, I can see already in the distance, Betty's drawing a crowd of people going, what on earth is this? Um, we've got Mark 1 Fiat Multiples over there as well. Let's go and explore more about this Elk Merkvardig show. Here it is. Every brand worthy, I think it effectively means. So chances of sunburn are quite high today. Porsche 954 S2 um, convertible. Gorgeous Fiat 124 Coupe. An early one in a very, very period correct colour. Uh, another Dutch car effectively, the Volvo 480. Uh, next to an Alfa Romeo 33. With ginger caters. I don't think we got them with ginger caters. Saab 93, Nissan Maxima, Nissan Irvan. Oh, that is a beauty. And then uh, we're going to swing around over here. There's more cars. We'll go and explore. I can see Renault's over there in the distance. But here's that Citroen ZX we saw coming in. Uh, the uh, Rally Spec Fiat Cinquecento. Uh, we've got a uh, Fiat Punto. Such a gorgeous bit of design, these Puntos. Uh, Ford Fusion. I'm not a fan, but I'm glad other people are. Honda logo, look at that for a colour. Uh, Subaru Impreza, a couple more DAFs. Uh, 55, that's got the Renault engine. Uh, the 46 has got the flat twin DAF's own engine. Uh, Chrysler Grand Voyager. The Subaru XV, I think. Mazda 323F, look at this little beauty. Little Suzuki Wiz Kid. Again, another little K car, rear engined but with the same one litre four cylinder, but was using the Bedford Rascal. 
uh, Citroen AX. We have a wiper geek moment because left-hand drive AXs have a different type rear wiper. Uh, right-hand drive ones have a completely straight wiper arm. I don't know why. Uh, lovely early Alpha Sud, 1975 apparently, very pretty. Uh, Panav 24BT. Uh, I think that's the longer one. I think the one I drove was a CT, which is slightly shorter wheelbase. Wonderful machines. I love that drive so much. Even though that car tried to break down on me several times. Uh, the Marquis, I think. It's effectively the posh Crown Vic. So Mercury Marquis, I think. Here is the Datsun 280C that I drove the last time I was here in the Netherlands. So uh, finally did a video on this last year. Twin rear wipers. This is also from Ivan and Patrick's collection. And what a beauty it is as well. Sierra XR4i, love these. Mitsubishi Charisma, um, a Dutch car. Uh, these were actually built here. Uh, Alfa Romeo, um, 1750, I think. Could be wrong. Oh yes, we got some Syrian action. So this is the first facelift where they put a sort of spoilery bumper on it. And I think changed the rear lights. Yeah, so got rear lights and uh, just a bit slightly different look, but very much the same body shell. As dearly departed Miss Daisy and my first Syrian was that colour. Uh, Skoda Favorite Estate or a Foreman if they were sold um, in the Czech Republic. And they called the Foreman here as well, it turns out. That must just be a UK thing. Which is why I get a lot of people in the comments when I had a Skoda Favorite estate telling me it wasn't a Skoda Favorite estate. Mark 1 Renault Espace. That's very nice. I have no idea. It's got Max on it. What is this? And what is it based on? I'm detecting Fiat Kick Design. Peugeot 405 rear lights. Interesting. Or Hyundai uh, Amica. Or is it an Atos? It's the earlier one, isn't it? Atos. So, yeah, Atos. A streetcar, name desire. A oh, Renault um, 15 coming in there, I think. I think they had a 15, so it had the full rear window. They also did a very similar 17. It's a Matra M540, 530 rather. I'm going to lose my stuff. Uh, streetcar again, Daihatsu Charmant. As I know of one of these in the UK, I think. I think Mr. Hurst still owns a Charmant. Very, very rare cars. It's effectively a Toyota Corolla rebadged. And uh, they did a couple of generations of these. That's the first generation. Uh, look, we've even got early hybrids here. Honda Insight, the second generation. Master 626. Very nice, sold as Ford Telstar in Australia with some subtle facelifts. Yeah, liking it. Music is very, very fitting. I hope I don't get copyright blocked. Subaru Justy, that's gorgeous. Subaru um, Leon. Uh, although they were never sold as that in the UK. They were just Subaru 1.8s, I think. Volkswagen Golf Mark IV. Yeah. Lancia Fima Turbo. That's lovely. Proper velour interior. And a Buick of bigness. That is um, enormous. So the event itself continues inside this building, which is the um, Laumann Toyota Museum. So we are going to go and check that out, but I think we need to run around outside a bit more first. There's another Renault 15. That's not a phrase you'll hear me say very often because they are just almost extinct in the UK. Love the rear styling, the light across uh, the back. Oh, Mark 1 Opel Cadet. Oh, I suppose it isn't a Mark 1 Cadet over here, is it? We got it as a Mark 1 Astra. It's a few generations into cadets. Uh, so it's Corollas variously. It's a nice lineup. And you've got Alfa Romeo 156 here. I think they're going to be struggling to squeeze all these cars in. Betty seems to be with the um, random Americans. So uh, I suppose that kind of works, doesn't it? Rover 75 here. We've got a right hand drive Austin Metro that has escaped the UK and apparently he's now winning trophies here in Europe. We can see the original registration, E297CAN. The Rover Streetwise, good C, Morris Minor, and here is that 1100 that came in earlier. 
and an MG ZS. But I want to go and have a look at the smarts because uh, I do like smarts ever so much. Uh, despite the fact that I don't always get on with the gearboxes. Good selection of smart roadsters. They're, they're becoming quite rare in the UK now. Uh, very funky things. All got three cylinder engines. But yeah, you don't often get to see a cross blade in the flesh. This was um, a quite extreme car. You, you better hope it's a sunny day. Because weather protection is pretty much nil. Uh, here we've got the Roadsters and the Roadster Coupes. And then we've got, of course, the Fiat Multiplers. And people were asking about Delia recently. Delia, the uh, Multipler, is sadly dead. But uh, these Multiplers happily live on. They're such great cars. Uh, so it's lovely to see them. Well, this has Miss Hubner all over it, doesn't it? I told to pick up Ch Chinook Newport. Well, so I think that would have been sold in America, though. A huge body on the back. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Oh, wow. That's uh, amazing. Huge rear window, big double bed, and even a sleeping area above the cab. We've actually been allowed to come inside. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. Look at that big double bed, lovely cupboard areas. You have got your little sink area here. Oh, it just smells of old caravan, but not in a bad way. I wonder if it's a workstation or something, a hob or something. Well, it dates from 1978. Yeah, the Matra M530 is a gorgeous design, V4 Ford engine. And a forerunner of the Bagheera and Morena. Just lovely. It's just a riot of curves. Now, I've never heard one before. You can hear that offbeat V4 Ford engine. Uh, Renault 19 Chamard coming in. That's really, really nice. Yeah. Let's go and look at some more cars. Stuff just keeps on arriving. A Chrysler Saratoga. Look at that. It's one of those sort of compact American cars that is like a huge Lincoln just squashed. Uh, Chrysler Crossfire, Capri, Nissan Figaro, quite an unusual sight um, here in the Netherlands. But uh, I, I've just clocked this Citroen Belfagor truck. Incredible things, these little viewing windows down in the front. So Citroen did go into the commercial world, kind of doubled their foot in the post-war years but ultimately decided trucks weren't for them and stuck to crazy things like this. Look at that for a colour. Oh, beautiful. And lovely little Mini. I love 1980s Minis with the black bumpers. If you damage these bumpers, they're almost impossible to re replace because everyone sells the chrome ones. Oh, look at the check interior. Wow. That is lovely. A Mini Magic. On the Quintet is unusual because it was actually sold as um, a Rover in um, some parts of the world, Australia notably. So let's go, let's go return to the lineup because it's just so nice to see these things drive in. I say drive, I have a sneaky feeling Peugeot 206 coupe convertible, uh, but that Simca 1000 there, lovely green facelift one, was actually pushed in. A lovely early GSA. Sorry, GS next to it as well. But yeah, it's a Honda Quintet. Again, I know what, one of these in the UK, and that's also owned by Mr. Hurst. Very unusual cars. Uh, let's go, go and walk the line, shall we? So we've got another GS coming in. That's got um, round headlamps. You know, the crowd gathering here just to watch all the unusual vehicles driving in. A Nissan Exa behind it. My friend Eddie owns an Exa, but he's got the estate body on it. The kind of interchangeable rear bodies. Uh, Renard Robin. I think people have been taken out for drives in. Including our friend Ruben. Morning. Morning. Oh, Proton 
persona coming in uh, on a truck is the GTI, the Satria. Um, a very, very good hot hatchback handling by Lotus. This Alfa Romeo here. Right, talking of Alfa Romeos, we'll keep going. Here is the, uh, that's the Renault 17. So we've seen the, um, the 15, this is the 17. Slightly different rear window treatment, but otherwise very similar. Renault 12, <laughs> memories of the mighty Dacia. Oh, Mark II Granada, two door. Oh, that's lovely and rear blind as well. Two liter L, lovely. Hello, lovely Morris. Uh, 1100 or 1300? Well, this is the 1300. Nice, it's Mark II with a slightly uh, uh, flatter rear wings. Another Copen, a Honda S660, a vehicle we have tested on the channel. Oh no, sorry, this is the later. Um, the Daihatsu Copen Robe, my mistake, misidentified. So this is the replacement for the original Copen. We, we haven't seen that in the UK at all. Uh, another Daihatsu coming in. I think this is the Core we didn't get uh, in the UK, or Mira. Yeah, so Mira in Japan, Core here. That replaced the one we've got, but we didn't get it. Porsche Boxster, the mid-engine enjoy. Renault Fuego, very, very nice. Ooh. GTS Automatic, love it. Peugeot 505, saloon and estate represented. Got a 505 estate tested, entirely different rear suspension. Um, on the estates, um, it's more of a beam rear axle, I think, independent rear suspension on the saloons. S-Class Mercedes, there's more than one of these here. So it's quite hot, headlamp wiper moment, beautiful colour and uh, mild nudity, excellent. Nissan Primera P10, these have all rusted away in the UK, so it's great to see one of those. Oldtimer Club, Kind Brabant. Oh, it's an Oldsmobile silhouette, it's the badge engineered transport. I was actually wrong. But yeah, I'm coming all the way to the entrance because we've got to look at this very special Alfa Romeo, yet another one of these Toyotas. It is a club specific to that age of um, Corolla. Another Lada. That's lovely. Wow. Another streetcar coming up. But yeah, this Alfa Romeo, this is such an oddity. I don't think I've ever seen one of these in the metal. It was designed in Italy. But it was actually built in Brazil and it uses the running gear of the earlier 1900. Now, this is known as the 2300. It was sold here as a Rio, but uh, they were an absolute disaster to the point that the um, importers had to buy them back uh, because people were just saying, I can't, this, no, just no. So it's a Brazilian built Italian car. Uh, fascinating. So it was in the 70s that these um, were built by FNM, which was, um, it wasn't initially just a, a company building um, other cars, but uh, they ended up teaming up with Alfa Romeo, building trucks and cars. And I think that relationship survived into the Fiat era. Uh, oh, Renault Espace, we don't get those in the UK anymore. That's just... Fascinating to see, never seen one. Oh, just missed a little Daihatsu Sherrard driving in. But uh, we got these uh, Mazda 121s, which are actually an Auto Zam review. Incredibly funky things. I just saw her changing gear, which suggests that they got them with manual transmissions. In the UK, you could only have your 121 with an automatic. Slightly odd choice. Oh no, you're not for this event. But yeah, very cute little things, aren't they? Oh, we're now on both sides of the road. Oh, Fintail Mercedes, lovely. Yeah. Oh, even more cars to look at when we go. Oh my gosh, it's a Chrysler 180. Oh my gosh, and they're still coming in. <laughs> so many cars. Try not to run Ivan over. And um, this is a traffic jam at the spur. Yeah. Oh my gosh, look at this, an old Hudson. Beautiful. Another GS. 
This is like the best traffic jam in the world. Hillman Imp, Sunbeam badged. That's fantastic. Paseo convertible. I think we've seen that at Japan Classic Sunday. And look at that Pratsy Ami. Yeah, oh yes, that's beautiful. Suzuki Wagon R, quite characterful. Toyota Sarah. Lada Samara, another Renault 17, just in case we didn't have enough of them. Well, we might have a queue to get back in. Aha, here we have an earlier Simca 1000. So we've got the um, really early one. They are such cute. Rearranging things, very much Fiat inspired, because Simca effectively used to be um, a producer of license built um, Fiat. But they started developing their own themes, uh, Opel Manta A, very, very pretty. And this is the facelifted. Simca thousand. Lovely cars and said to handle very well. Here goes the Robin again. It, it's going out on test drives, I think, just to prove that um, they're not as unstable as people, uh, unstable rather, as people say. So uh, good. So the GS is an X3, uh, which is sort of mildly sporty. Um, they fit the biggest engine they got at the time, but really still only gentle sportly. Mark 1 Megan Scenic. Lovely, it was one of those in Festival of the Unexceptional last year. Uh, Opal Senator, I just love these beautiful cars. Fiat Strada or Ritmo, depending on which market they were sold in. Strada in the UK, uh, Ritmo here in the Netherlands. Lovely, must do a test video on one of those. Uh, Beige Lada, perfect. Uh, another CX later, Series 2. Alfa Romeo 75 with a rear mounted gearbox. So it's kind of got a track transaxle. Buick Regal, he says, reading it off the door. Audi 100, where have these all gone? This generation seems to have utterly vanished. Volkswagen Passat, the sort of earliest, very, very Audi inspired version. A Renault Twingo, of course, I had to be a Twingo here, at least one. Pantograph wiper moment. Lovely Mitsubishi Sigma, uh, which I think these were Australian built. So Betty, not the only Australian car here. Suzuki Super Carry, built to the K regulations. That has the same engine as that little um, whiz kid we saw earlier. Uh, BMW Z3 coming into their own now, aren't they really? And uh, we'll go down this lineup as well. Nissan Sunny, fancy uh, N14 generation, Saab 9000. Ooh, that Lancia Kappa. This is one we didn't get in the UK. Beautiful. I don't actually know. Oh, and next to it, an Auto Bianchi Y10. So in the UK, we got them as Lancias, but other markets got these as Auto Bianchis. And uh, most of the ones we got had a black tailgate. Lovely, lovely little cars. Rear suspension later went under the Fiat Panda. I've got another Reliant coming in. Rialto over there, the Cappuccino 2. Um, here's the um, Opel Cadet we saw earlier. Alfa Romeo 156, Honda E, bizarrely. Toyota Remar 2, uh, facelifted Alfa Romeo 33. Uh, Lexus GS 300, Saab 99 with the push broom headlamp wipers, another Z3, Honda Civic, and another Mazda 121. Oh yes. We've got a Dacia Logan MCV here. I love these. I think the styling on these is absolutely fantastic. Isn't that really nice? Really long wheelbase, big square back. So very, very practical as daily transport. Uh, Suzuki Beleno coming in behind it. I've just seen a Land Crab coming in. It's like a Walsley version of the Land Crab. Be joining its BMC friends, I hope. We're going to try and have a look at that. But uh, yeah, these Logans, I think very stylish. Suzuki Cappuccino has just come in over here. Beautiful, very, very dinky. Good morning, Patrick, how are you doing? Busy, busy, busy. Yeah. Oh, it's left-hand drive as well. Wow. Left-hand drive Rialto, love it. Brilliant. It's an export model. But yeah, that's amazing. I had no idea they exported them here. I know that they'd exported Robins. Beautiful. Thank you. Uh, Dacia, oh, what is this? It's got a pantograph wiper on it. 
It's the spring, which I think is their all electric version. We, we want these in the UK. We have not got them. So that's cool. We've seen that come in. We've seen this come in as well. The Alfetta. You can see how that Alfa Romeo we looked at, the 2300, the styling is very much inspired by the Alfetta. But this is very different. This, like the 75, has the gearbox at the back instead. A gorgeous CX GTI as well. And the most beige BMW I think I've ever seen. That's lovely. E28 5 Series. Lovely cars. Yeah, this event just keeps on giving. This S-Class is the most delicious colour. Sort of a metallic green. Reminds me of um, 1970s bathroom suites. Uh, Citroen BX here. Don't know what spec this one is. Good to see. Another Granada. Uh, Alfa Romeo Giulietta. It says Giulia, but I think this is a Giulietta. It's gorgeous. I always love the rear styling of these. Uh, Toyota Land Cruiser. Lovely. Lancia Fima. A 16 valve non turbo this time. This is a Volkswagen Porsche 914. It's got the uh, flat four engine in the middle. So if you haven't seen my um, feature on Volkswagen's Forgotten Hatchback, you need to look that up. Uh, because I think a lot of the thinking went into that. This is Ford Transit we saw when I came to the Netherlands in 2019. This was at our Hubnet Social we held here. Uh, this is Sunny ZX Coupe, Lancia Gamma. So there is actually a little window so you can see through um, that area. But uh, plush velour, flat four engine, utterly bonkers. Magnificent cars, uh, Citroen XM Estate, wonderful. This is the facelifted Pontiac Transport, where they um, tried to make it a little more um, fitting in with the, the rest of the range. But uh, yeah, I've tested one of these, that is on the channel. You can go and have a look at that. Uh, got a very colourful Panda. I like that, that's very arty. Just like art with insulation tape, but it still works. And uh, oh wow, Isuzu Gemini, another car we didn't get in the UK. So a fun fact is the uh, Lotus Alan M100 uses an Isuzu engine. I wonder if it's related to the engine in that. That is an Isuzu Gemini GTI. Amazing. Here is the big thing of which we know nothing at all. The Centennial. Crazy. Uh, Renault Clio. And then we're back to the uh, Cube again. So yeah, it's just amazing. There is so much here to see. I haven't even got to the Daihatsus yet. So when it comes to this generation of Corolla, this one's my absolute favorite, the four wheel drive estate, sold as a Sprinter Carib in some markets, which is the same name used on the Tercel. This is a Toyota Corolla Escape here. I just love that rear styling. It's just slightly bonkers. I've seen the engine bay of this Fiat X19. Nice little gathering of them. We've got a 124 Spider there as well. So that's lovely to see. Oh, these so pretty with the earlier bumpers, as all of these seem to have. Uh, Renault's got a Renault 5. Yeah, loving the um, aftermarket fog lights in the grill. Still one of the finest styled hatchbacks of all time, I think. Uh, Renault 20 next to it. And it also did the 30 with a V6 engine, the PRV. Very, very rare in the UK, as are Renault 18s. Uh, this uh, one, a GTL. And this is a Super Sank, the facelifted Renault 5. And there is that 19 Chamard, as we called them in the UK. Lovely. And then so many 15s and 17s. It's just bizarre, frankly. Oh, here is a beauty. Uh, this may be the one I'm testing. Uh, I'm going to do a test on a Fiat 130 Saloon, which to my money, and this is a controversial opinion, is prettier than the coupe. Is it just me? I'm sure it's not just me. If Miss Hubnut was here, she would be having kittens for not only have we got a huge lineup of Copans now, we've also got other Daihatsus, like this Mira Gino, which is clearly a little mini expired, uh, inspired in its styling. Uh, it is based on this generation Kure stroke Mira, uh, of which there are quite a few of them. Where's the one we followed coming in? I think it was this one. 
we saw on the way in. Yes, we've got the windscreen wipers on the wrong way around. Wow, great little collection of cars. So yeah, that is the, um, the, the later version of the Mira, but we didn't get in the UK. Um, no 251s here, it's a bit sad. Look at this Daihatsu with the um, convertible body. And another Syrian, marvelous. The Sherrods, um, there's not enough of them, frankly. Oh, it's turbocharged, look at that, turbocharged triple in the 1980s. Got to absolutely love it. And uh, I love these, uh, these are the G100 Sherrods. Because that's the thing, our, our Sherrod is not a Sherrod. It would belong in the Mira lineup, really. Just admiring this beautiful Honda logo. Uh, I've never seen one modified before. We did get them in the UK, but they were just seen as old people's cars and not cool at all. That is a beautiful color. Oh, here comes Ruben in the Robin. So apparently you, you can offer your car up for test drives and people can drive them around, which I think is a lovely idea. Uh, we've got a Xantia Series 2 coming in as well. That sounded like clutch slip. I think it was meant to sound impressive. Uh, Daihatsu YRV has just come in as well. Obviously we drove that turbocharged one. Got a BMW 600 there, all stripey. Is with um, perhaps the most fascinating front door of any vehicle because it's on the front, like a BMW Isetta. It has a side door to allow access to the rear. And there goes the door. Look at that for timing. Marvellous. Lovely Peugeot 404 there as well. But there we go. Someone else is having a go in the Robin. Uh, there are even more 17s and 15s lined up now. It's just incredible. But uh, I'm going to end this part one here. And uh, there will be a part two by the look, because there's just so much to see and uh, so much more we need to go and look at. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in a future video. Farewell.